So we begin. We begin. Okay, since everybody can see my screen. So we're starting with protozoology, protozoology, you know, the study of protozoans, medical protozoans. Um, I started first of all with an intro to medical parasitology. We learned, you know, the what is it all about and all, and then I want to now start proper. So protozoology, simple definition, is just simply um, the study of the members of, you know, the kingdom, actually the, the, the subphylum, you know, protozoa. It's just a study of pro, protozo, okay, yeah, yeah, protozoan, protozoanic organisms. And to be precise, we have, um, you know, in the classification of organisms, we have kingdom, phylum, you know, class, you know, order, family, genus, species. So if you can see the uh, table, you can see phylum sarcomastigophora. That's, um, you know, the division sarcomastigotes, class lobosea, class zoomastigophora. So under class Lobosea, we have these organisms, Amoeba proteus, and Amoeba histolytica, Negleria foleri, and Acanta amoeba. These are, um, we call them the ameboid members. They are just am amoeba. So the class Lobosea just consists of different kinds of amoeba members. And the form of their locomotion is that um, they use, they use pseudopodia, they use pseudopodia. So, for their locomotion, they use pseudopodia for capturing food. You know, pseudopodia is just simply the cytoplasmic extensions of these organisms. So the features, as you can see on the screen, they don't have um, a definite shape. They reproduce exclusively um, asexually by variations of mitosis. You know, they are known for binary diffusion, to be precise. Okay, and one major thing about their stages in their life cycles that they produce cysts. All right, so these are the Lobosea um, class. Under class of Mastigophora, you're having um, organisms that have mastigotes, flagella to be precise. Zoo, meaning animal, mastigotes. So these are organisms that are animal, and at the same time, you know, they have flagella, so they are flagellates. Example, Lamblia giardia, um, Euglena viridis, Trypanosoma species. And the, form, and the form of their locomotion, of course, as I've said before, they use flagella. For their locomotion, flagella is just like um, a hair-like, you know, structure that helps in their, you know, propagation and their locomotion and all. The features is that they have a fixed oval, elongated, or spherical shape. Um, when compared to the Lobosea class, Lobosea, they are different. Lobosea doesn't have flagella. They use the podia for their locomotion. They don't even have a definite shape. The Zoomastigophora people or organisms, yeah. They have flagella for their locomotion. Um, they have a fixed oval, elongated, or spherical shape. And then we have um, the apicomplexa people. Uh, the apicomplexas, from the name apicomplexa, okay, that means that they have a structure known as, you know, um, apicomplex. So it's an apicomplexic structure. It's a structure found on their apex, on their tips. And the class under that phylum is sporozoa. Examples are Plasmodium, and another major example is um, Toxoplasma gondi. You know, they don't have organelles for their locomotion. That's one major thing about them. They don't have organelles for their locomotion, and they reproduce sexually and um, asexually. Another phylum that will be shown later on was due to the table and all, it's um, the phylum called Ciliophora. Um, phylum Ciliophora. Under that phylum, under that division, we have, um, you know, the class called Lithostomatea. Lithostomatea, these organisms, a major, major member of such phylum is Balantidium coli. Okay, these organisms from the name Ciliophora, they use cilia for their locomotion. Okay, they use cilia for their locomotion. Um, they have two types of nuclei, macro and micro nuclei. Okay, they reproduce sexually and asexually by you know transversal uh, fission. Okay, so basically, we have three major phyla we're dealing with protozoan. You know, when we're when we're dealing with um protozoans, we have three major phyla that is under medical parasitology study. Phylum sarcomastigophora, which is divided into class Lobosea and zoomastigotes. Phylum apicomplexa, which is only class Protozoa. They 
divide they reproduce by sporogony and then we have um phylum ciliophora you know the cilia organisms which um under that we have little stomatea class and that's balantidium coli all right so let's move on to the next slide does does anybody have any question pertaining to what i just said now no okay any anybody have any question please feel free to uh, message me on the chat box okay you can feel free to message me on the chat box privately you know or you can just raise up your hand if you have a question all right and i'll and i'll see that so now let's get into the topic for the day let's get into the topic for the day that is class lobosea class lobosea okay um but before I do that, <laughs> I want us to take up, um, you know, quiz time. I want us to try out, try out something amazing. So I said that um, at, the start, at the starting of my class, I said that I would be involving each and every one in quizzes. So yeah, so here is it on the screen, as you can see the screen. So let's start with number one. So it's pop quiz time, all right? A patient came to the hospital complaining of frequent watery stooling and abdominal pains. Examination of his stool showed a mucoid stool with the appearance of raspberry jelly. What is the suspected protozoan? So you can free you, you can use the chat box, you know, message me privately for what you think is the answer. A Lamblia giardia, B Treponema pallidum, C Entamoeba coli, D Tenia solium, or E Entamoeba histolytica. All right, so I'll be checking the chat box. We all have at least um one minute to get that done with all right i'm already seeing some responses from people okay so just in less than a minute and then we'll move on to the next question i won't answer okay okay i'll answer the questions as um you know in individually and all all right so just one minute okay i'm seeing some answers already i'm seeing some answers already Okay, raspberry jelly. One major thing about um, you know, questions like this, they actually have a keyword. You know, you just need to know what is the keyword involved here, and with that, you'll be able to find out what to do. It's not difficult, really. It's actually very simple. That's how crop questions are usually. Okay, so please, everybody, get to work. Um, I've only seen just three answers. I would like everybody to contribute. What you think is the answer to number one question? Okay. All right, the time is up. The time is up from from okay, okay, from what I'm seeing. Okay, some are choosing E. Um, someone chose A, another person chose C. Hmm. Now, okay, let's let's look at it. Raspberry jelly, as the name implies, this stool is looking so much like um how will I put it? It's from the name. I don't I I really can't be able to like show it here, but I want you to picture something that looks like a jelly. If you've watched maybe a cartoon or a movie, you know how um, maybe some people, the, the cartoons they may be eating something called a jelly form. So imagine a red pasty mixture, for example, you know, a red thick mucoid pasty um, mixture. And imagine that this is the stool of a patient. So it means that this, organism is eating away at the intestines because so far as that stool has something ready in it, that's blood blood and mucus that comes from the intestinal walls so this means that this protozoan is mostly intestinal number one point number two this you know protozoan causes watery stooling and abdominal pains that means it causes diarrhea so you should be um, understanding that okay now we're dealing with organisms that number one they are intestinal based, they are localized in the intestines, particularly the large intestines, number one, all right? Number two, these organisms, they cause diarrhea. And the third point from here is that, okay, they cause abdominal pains. The third point is the appearance of raspberry jelly. The answer to this question really is, so for everybody that chose um, E, and amoeba histolytica, you're correct. That's the answer to that question. And so amoeba histolytica causes um, the appearance of stool with a raspberry jelly form. 
it causes abdominal pains, it causes diarrhea. In fact, the, the diarrhea is the main clinical manifestation. So the answer to this question really is entamoeba histolytica. Now, this question is very, very tricky. It also puts entamoeba coli. And I'll be explaining in the course of this lesson that both of them are similar, they're like cousins. But when you're having the major keyword, as you can see from the slide, you're seeing raspberry jelly, as you can see, raspberry jelly. Once you see that and you see frequent watery stooling, you're seeing abdominal pains. And then at the end of the question, they told you what is the organism or what is the protozoan. They have already given you, you know, the exposure to the answer. Raspberry jelly is characteristic to enter amoeba histolytica. All right. If anybody has any question, please, please feel free to indicate by, you know, raising of hands in the chat box. Feel free. Okay. The next question. So does anyone have, have any question concerning number one? All right. Nobody has any question. So I'll move on. Now we all have one minute to answer the question. Okay. We have one, one minute to answer the question. The, the question for number two, a boy came to a doctor with complaints of diarrhea and the analysis of his tool showed the presence of cysts, cysts with four nuclei in them. What is your probable guess to the protozoan causing this condition? All right, so let's get to work. I'm already seeing some answers, that's fantastic. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see for number two. Okay, 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 I'm seeing some answers. Seeing some answers, seeing some answers. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. So in one minute time, I would end it. One minute time, I'll be ending it. All right, that's good. Okay, and the time is up. Yeah, everybody's correct. Awesome, that's that's fantastic. Like I give you guys a round of applause. You all got the answer correct. The answer is um, D, and amoeba histolytica. Okay, that's fantastic, and amoeba histolytica. All right, let me just, okay. So the reason for this answer really, why this answer is entamoeba histolytica, of course, from the keyword already given to you, they said cyst, number one, cyst. Cyst is like, the form is, I can liken it to, okay, you guys are first years, in second year, if I'm saying this to a second year person, I will be talking like Zymogen in biochemistry. Let's leave that part. Cyst is like an egg form, an inactive form of an active um, organism, an active microorganism. Cyst actually is the shell, so it's the inactive form of an organism in a, in, um, a, a, a shell-like form, and that's due to um, harsh environmental conditions, you know, unfavorable conditions where the organism is located. So for the organism to be to survive, they need to they need to you know stay in you know, I, I, I'll, I'll call it for you guys that have, for people who have watched Avatar, you know, that's um, that frozen state where he was at the very initial start of the movie. Yeah, you can, you can, you can liken it to a cyst. Now they said the presence of cysts with four nuclei. Once you see this, just quickly analyze the answers to look for enter amoeba histolytica because that's your probable answer. That's actually the answer to this question. So that's D. Anybody have any questions concerning that? All right, nobody has any question, all right? So let's get on with the next one. Third question, now let's look at it. A five-year-old came to a dentist complaining of gum pain and toothache. Examination shows dental caries and damage to the gums. From your investigations, this guy had picked up a chewing gum from the streets and put it in his mouth some days ago. What is your likely diagnosis? Okay, A, Negleria foleri, B, Entamoeba gingivalis, C, Hymenolepis nana, D, Mesagonimus yokogawai, or E, Clonochis sinensis. I would like to see some answers, which I'm already seeing. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, we just have one minute, less than a minute to answer that question. Looking at it already, we're already seeing why. I'm glad that everybody's contributing. Okay. Please feel free to stop me um, when you know you don't understand. Okay, if if someone didn't understand the reasons or something, you know, please feel free to stop me. All right. Okay. All right, Harasho. Let's continue on. The answer to this question, as everybody indicated, fantastic. It's B, and so I'm working And of course, the 
the expo is already there. Look at looking at the Latin name. I'm sure that everybody here did Latin. You know, this care name, you guys, even Karazin, you guys did Latin too, medical students. So Gingi Valley is gone. Okay, so the expo is already here. They said that this guy from the very first statement, he had gum pain and toothache. Okay, and the examination shows damage to the teeth, you know, dental caries, damage to the gums, you know, and then they now told you for extra info for people that want to know if if their answer is correct. He picked up a chewing gum that was you know infected with this organism. So the answer is B. Number four. Okay, we have one minute to do that. The examination of the stool specimen of a patient showed cysts of eight nuclei. What is your guess on the pathogen? All right, so let's see. Already seen some answers. That's good. All right, so number four. Okay, have less than a minute. A. Trichinella spiralis. B. Enterobius vermicularis. C. Entamoeba coli. D. Plasmodium falciparum. E. Trichicephalus trigorius. Look carefully at the question. The keyword is already there. And yeah, 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 yeah. Correct answers. I'm already seeing them. All right. Okay. 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 I think everybody has contributed. All right. So let's end that question. Yeah, everybody got it right. The answer is C, Entamoeba coli. Of course, this one is the cousin of Entamoeba histolytica. While Entamoeba histolytica has um, a cyst of four nuclei, Entamoeba coli has cyst of eight nuclei. That's the difference between the two. Fifth question. All right, fifth question says, um, a patient has watery stool mixed with blood and mucus, all right? And there is the presence of cysts having four nuclei. What is your possible diagnosis? What do you think the disease could be? A, toxoplasmosis, B, enterobiasis, C, ascariasis, D, amebiasis, and um, okay, there was meant to be an E there, but uh, okay, let me just like in something. Okay, E, uh, malaria. Hey, it's, it can be possible, who knows? All right. Okay, so we have less than a minute to answer that. Okay. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Watery stool. That's a very key word there. All right. I think everybody has answered. Okay. So I'm ending this part now, number five. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, good job. Clap for yourselves. You guys all got it right. The answer is amebiasis. That's the answer to that question. Of course, now for people that may not really understand why, of course, the question said he this patient came with watery stool, mixed with blood, mixed with mucus. So you'll be likening raspberry jelly stool, right? the patient had the presence of cyst of four nuclei. So this guy obviously has entamoeba histolytica swarming in his organism, swarming in his body system. So the major disease that um, entamoeba histolytica causes is actually amoebic dysentery, AKA amoebiasis. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Finally, my sixth quiz question for uh, now. We have one, one minute to answer that. A patient has come to a hospital with the symptoms of keratitis. Hmm. Check it out. Keratitis. Loss of consciousness, hallucinations, and vomiting. The doctor diagnosed amoebic encephalitis and keratitis at the same time. All right. The organism under examination has spiky pseudopodia. Note spiky pseudopodia. What is the organism causing this disease? A. And Samiba Kingivalis, B, Ukereria Bancrofti, C, Dracunculus medinensis, D, Acanthamoeba species, E, Toxoplasma gondi. Less than one minute to answer that, people. Let's see some answers here. Okay, 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 okay. Seeing some answers already. I have less than a minute to answer that. Mm 
-hmm. All right, time's up. Now, answer to that question, the answer to this question really, of course, for you guys who um, put D, for everyone that put D, Acanthamoeba species, you're absolutely correct. In the course of our lesson, we'll get to understand that Acanthamoeba species, their morphology, their body structure, from the name Acanthamoeba, Acanth, curled, hooks. So they have a spiky pseudopodia, you know, Acanthamoeba, amoeba, they have pseudopodia, Acanth, you know, hooks, spikes. So this organism, causes keratitis, causes amoebic encephalitis, keratitis, you know, vomiting, hallucinations, loss of consciousness. All right, fantastic. Everybody did absolutely well. That's great. So that's the pop quiz for now. If you have any question, please feel free to message me or stop me by raise of hand. All right, so let's get in now to, now let's now understand the basic concept. Class Lobosea, just, re, just revision. All right, so as I said before, these people are the amoeba and their relatives, okay? The characteristics, they have a contractile gel called ectoplasm, okay? Which surrounds their cytosol, their cytoplasm called endoplasm. So these people, these organisms, they have something that surrounds their, maybe like a coat called ectoplasm, and the cytosol that is being surrounded is called the endoplasm. Two, second characteristic, of course, like I said before, they have pseudopodia by motion. They move with pseudopodia. They will rule with it. They ingest food particles using pseudopodia, which is just um, virtually their cytoplasmic extensions. Third um, characteristic, they store their food in, their, in sacs called food vacuums. Fourth characteristic, um, amoeba that live in fresh water. You know, they, um, you know, that's water that doesn't really have salt in them. The, their concentration is hypotonic. These amoeba, they are adapted to have an, um, an organelle called contractile vacuum, okay? And that is just um, an organelle that helps to expel out excess water engulfed by the amoeba. Fifth characteristic, like I said before, amoeba, they divide by, um, you know, they divide by asexual means, particularly binary fission, they split. So one splits into two and continues on like that. Sixth characteristic, under difficult, harsh environmental conditions, like I said before, they form the resistance cysts. Seventh characteristic, they can be obligate or facultative parasites. In my previous class with um, you all, I talked about this, you know, an obligate meaning they depend on the host for their survival and they die with the host. So they live and they die with the host. Facultative, they can do without the host. They can become free living and they can become parasitic. It's a choice they make. Okay. For example, um, of an example of a free living amoeba is amoeba proteus. Example of um, a parasitic amoeba is the ones that we just talked about in our pop quiz. Entamoeba coli, Entamoeba histolytica, Acantamoeba species, Negleria fulleri also. A major big note also, um, I would like you guys to know that um, trophozoids, that word trophozoid, because this um, particular keyword will be seen it throughout our lessons, throughout our revision classes. Trophozoid just simply means um, the young form. Um, I would call it the active energetic motile feeding stage of an organism. All right, so it's just the, um, the, the form of an organism that, you know, it moves with it, it feeds, it's active, it divides in this particular stage. So we have majorly, you'll be seeing this in all um, parasites, well, almost all really. They have two forms, trophozoids or cysts. Cysts is inactive, resistant to environmental conditions. Trophozoids, they are the active it's ones. It. Hello? A a anybody have any question? Okay, no. So cyst um, is the inactive form, trophozoids, they are the active form, all right? So with that, we can move on. So let's now get to the slides. So welcome our members. So amoeba proteus number one, as you can see, this is it, the first image. You can see that's more whitish in color. You can see the contractile vacuum. You can see the nucleus, pseudopodia. You can see the ectoplasm outside, endoplasm inside, full vacuums. Um, yeah. Then who can tell me what this one is, really? This one that's in the center. 
with a with an almost bluish greenish color if i should say so anybody just give me a wild guess all right let me check the chat box yeah yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right so let's actually look at it um okay a person just replied that this is e coli all right so let's find out if that is actually true let's look at it someone also said cyst of entamoeba very very good answer but let's 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 analyze it count the number of nuclei here okay in this slide really it's actually it's actually difficult to find out which one is which one two three four and i guess that one of these oval forms it's actually um a nucleus this was actually meant to have been um an entamoeba histolytica so the person who said entamoeba coli you're actually not wrong because the slide is a little bit difficult to understand that's sometimes the cases of slides and all but actually the answer to, the answer to this question is e histolytica okay Enter amoeba histolytica. Enter amoeba histolytica. All right. So look carefully at the next one. Let's look at the, the other part now. Who can guess what this one could be? Okay, the other may be the food vacuum with four nuclei. Awesome. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with you. I also I also think so as well. I also think so as well. This has to be, yeah, full vacuum. Exactly, exactly. So the other, the other one is actually also a little bit difficult to find out. The one in blue staining. If you look carefully at it, it has something inside of it. You know, that's something special. <laughs> if I should, if I should say. So looking at it now, um, really, the answer to this one, the answer to this slide. On the right side, it's still the same thing. It's entamoeba histolytica. Sometimes your slides may be difficult to understand, and I think um, the best thing to do is the slides that the teacher gives to you. You just have to memorize it. You have to memorize. You have to just you know remember it and all. All right. So really, um, looking at it now, the answer to this to, to this to the right side is entamoeba histolytica. Of course, the reason is because look carefully at what is inside there. Look carefully at what's inside there, and you see that it's it's like a black, um, a blackish round structure there. Those things are actually red blood cells, and in the course of our lessons, we we'll understand why. Now, also the same thing down here. You're seeing um an almost pinkish organism with red spots. Now, this red spot is simply red blood cells. The same thing is um entamoeba histolytica. Okay, in its active form, in its trophozoite form. The one that we talked about here that um, um, a friend just, uh, Mr. Clement just um, gave us, you know, it could be four nuclei with one um, food vacuum and that's the cyst. So this is actually the cyst form. The other two, they are the trophozoite form. Okay, so that is understood. Anybody has any question concerning the slides just now? Welcome back. So let's continue with our. Oh, hope everybody can see the slide, the screen. Okay. So let's get on with our next slide. The second slide, of course, as we can see from the slideshow, it's entamoeba coli. That's our next organism to deal with. As we as we earlier on said, these organisms, they are cyst form, they have eight nuclei. Okay. And that you can actually see here. You can actually count them. You can actually count them here. That's entamoeba coli. Uh, okay. So you can see the one or the two uh, slides, the one and the two slides here. Now let's go and get on with the next one. Our next member of um class Lobosea is Negleria foleri. Negleria foleri. And I want you guys to understand that this organism is an amoeboflagellate. flagellate. That means that this organism can exist in two forms, an amoeba and a flagellate form. Like I said before, amoeba don't, you know, they don't have flagella, they use pseudopodia. But this organism has the capacity 
to be an amoeba and at the same time a flagellate. It can be, um, okay, I won't say at, at the same time. It can be um, in amoebic form and it can be also in a flagellate form, if you understand. All right, so these are the two slides for this organism. You can either see one of this, as you can see, you can see one as an amoeba, the other has flagella. Same thing on the, on the one on the right, you can see it also. Okay, that's Negleria foleri. Now, the last member for this um, phylum, sorry, for this class, Lubosea is um, Acanthamoeba species. Acanthamoeba, look at it carefully, you can see from its um, spikes. So it has a spiky pseudopodia, you know, that's the trophozoic form on the left side and on the right side is the cyst form, okay? So that's one major, major thing about um, Acanthamoeba species. They have a spiky form, um, yeah, that's it. So let's now move on to each member. Let's just get a ground rule on each member. Okay, and so Amoeba is, is Oditica. Um, it causes amoebic dysentery. Of course, it's underclass Dobosea, Phylum sarcomastigophora. It's found in the Middle East, India, Indochina, North and Central Africa, Indonesia, call any country you want to call. The invasive stage of um, E. histolytica for a human being is the cyst. It's not the trophozoite. So for the organism to be able to invade an, um, it has to be in the cyst form. The source of invasion is obviously infected human beings. The route of transmission is usually peroral through the mouth. And of course, if it's through the mouth, quickly factors of transmission would just either be contaminated water, contaminated food stuff, you know, even pressure to present contact and then you with, with you know dirty hands, you put something in your mouth also. So by putting your you put in, you know, something um you know stain your hand and if you don't wash your hands and you use it through your mouth, it can occur as well. This is an odd case, but in anal, oral, sexual intercourses, mostly with, um, you know, as you can see on the screen, homosexuals and all. Now, the localization in the human body, where E. histolytica is normally found, is in your large intestine. In um, very abnormal cases, okay, large intestine. So it invades your body and is localized in your large intestine. The morphology, it can occur in three forms three good forms, okay? Three good forms. And the first form is Forma Magna. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, 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 okay. Taking into cognizance. Thank you so much. I just saw um, a question or, or a suggestion, a contribution. Thank you. All right. Yeah, exactly. I actually would agree. I'll 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 look at so we'll we'll look at it again. All right. Thank you for that contribution. Now, the morphology, as I said before, they can occur in three forms. Number one, forma magna. Number two, forma minuta. Three, cyst form. From the name, forma magna, meaning okay, large form, big form, the large form. So it's the largest trophozoic form of this organism, and it feeds on red blood cells. One major thing about forma magna is that Forma magna is erythrophage, um, it's er erythrophagic. It feeds on red blood cells, it's phagocytic, it engulfs red blood cells. While forma minuta doesn't, it's a commensal, okay? And if you remember commensal, it doesn't really harm the host, but it benefits still. So it lives in the large intestine and feeds on bacteria. The cyst form, as we have understood, it contains four nuclei, okay? So on with the next, then life cycle, quickly life cycle, okay, the cyst invade the human body, you know, via the oral route, it, um, it transforms into the trophozoites, invades the colon, the large intestine where they multiply, and then, you know, it starts to eat. So the, so the former magna begins to feed, because it's phagocytic, it begins to feed on the mucosa, eats away at the wall of the intestine, grows, um, you know, it then goes to the blood vessels, starts feeding on, on the red blood cells and all. That's why at the later stage of this, for people who are affected, they have what we call that raspberry jelly stool, bloody mucus stool, bloody mucus stool. So because blood is, you know, removed together with the mucus that has been removed from the large intestine walls into the stool as well. So 
we can also have asymptomatic carriers as well. People who don't really express the symptoms, but they have the organism inside of them. So the main clinical manifestation is diarrhea. As we have understood, it's diarrhea and it causes raspberry jelly form. The lab diagnosis, you detect the cyst in the stool. You detect the appearance of a four nuclei cyst in the stool in asymptomatic patients, okay? For the acute amebiasis, you can detect the formal magna and the formal minuta in the liquid stool of the patients, all right? Now, of course, Entamoeba coli, let's get on with the next member, Entamoeba coli. Now, these people, they are the cousins, okay? Like I said before. Now, they are not really harmful to the human being, but they can be. They can transform, they can become harmful, they can become, they can abnormally transform to damage the host's um, body system. They are, so it's a commensal and it can cause mild diarrhea and dysentery, okay? It looks morphologically like Entamoeba histolytica and their life cycles are actually identical. Their roots of transmission, they are the same. Their factors of transmission, they are the same. But one major difference about them is that enter amoeba coli, they have eight nuclei in their cyst form. Enter amoeba histolytica has four nuclei in its cyst form. All right, that's the major difference between the two, really. Then we have enter amoeba gingivalis. This one, from the name, as, we, as we've understood, is found in your oral cavity. It causes damage to the gum tissue, causes periodontitis, it causes dental caries, it can cause, you know, gingivitis also. Yeah, and it has no cyst form. It can be transmitted by kissing, it can be transmitted with contaminated food. It can be, um, you know, transmitted also with chewing gum, toothpick, and the rest of them. All right, so that's for that one. Does anybody have any question or contribution to give for um, the enter amoeba family. Okay, no one has any question or a contribution. All right, next one is Negleria foleri, aka brain eating amoeba. These um, um, amoeba organisms, they are really recognized as organisms that feed on the brain. They destroy CNS, they destroy the nervous system of their patients, of their host. Um, Okay, it causes what we call PAM, short form, PAM, meaning primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Okay, it causes damage to the meninges of the brain and the spinal cord. Found everywhere, and its invasive stage is the trophozoids or the flagellated form. Okay, like I told you guys before, it is an amoeba flagellate. As you can see in the morphology, you know, there are two trophozoid forms in the free living states. Number one is an amoeba. As you can see, number one is an amoeba that moves rapidly with a single pseudopodium. Number two is a flagellate with four to six flagella that is non-dividing and non-feeding. And the transformation of the amoeba to the flagellate form takes place in water and hypotonic medium. All right. It's found in the brain, of course, in a patient, found also in fresh water of natural basins, and that's majorly where they can um, be contacted from passed into the organism through nasal inhalation or nasal insufflation. They don't really pass into the organism. It's not usual for um, Neglera foleri to be transmitted through uh, drinking contaminated water. They would normally have to pass through your nasal cavity by inhalation. So you can ask me, how is it that the water is the factor, but it's entering into the organism, not through the, the mouth? Of course, when somebody swims in the um, you know, when, when, when a person swims in a, a contaminated water body and the water then passes in through the, uh, you know, nasal cavity, it infects the whole body system. And of course, you can see the symptoms, you can see the, the various symptoms. You know, you can see uh, the nasal symptoms, headache, and in the later on functions, you are seeing uh, neck rigidity, coma, convulsions, and then you can see the meningoencephalitis, full bloom, which is normally accompanied by death, sadly. Okay, the lab diagnosis, you detect the cyst in the human tissue. Okay, you detect the cyst in the human tissue, but the, 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 the trophozoid form, you can find the trophozoid form in wet brain tissues, okay? You can find it in wet brain tissues, all right? So let's move on with, actually, you can find it in wet CSF, sorry, wet CSF, cerebrospinal fluid specimens not brain tissue. 
Okay, so you detect the cyst in the human tissue, and then you can detect the. Oh, okay, 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 okay. This is Negleda foleri. You can't detect cysts. Cysts then they are not really found in um they can be detected in the human tissue they, they only consist of trophozoites okay so trophozoites yeah so the answer to this actually is that cysts you can never find a cyst of negrira foliary in the human tissue actually what i was meant what, what i meant to say was that um negrira foliary actually they uh, they only occur in trophozoite forms okay and they can be found in your csf in the csf of the patient now the next one is finally acanta amoeba species these organisms, they cause what is called GAE, for short, granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. Also, they can cause disseminated amoebic disease of the skin, disseminated amoebic disease of the skin, and they can cause amoebic keratitis. From Latin, keratitis, inflammation of the cornea. So they are found everywhere. They can be found in different water bodies. It's invasive stage in the humans, it's cyst, it can't be transmitted from person to person by contact. Its route is percutaneous and it's rarely transmitted into the organism by inhalation. So it travels from the nasopharynx into your digestive system. It can also be tra transferred through um, wounded skin and through the cornea. It reaches the, CN the, the CNS and just like the Negleira foliary, they begin to eat away at the brain tissue. They begin to damage neurons. All right, factors, contaminated water, contaminated contact lens, contaminated dust. There are two stages of the life cycle. Number one is the trophozoite stage, and number two is the cyst stage. All right, so with that, finally, with that, finally, that's the end of the slide. That's the end of today's lesson. All right, and I actually want to thank everybody for signing into the 